cloud training. Before we get into the AWS, let's try to first understand what exactly is cloud computing. Okay, so yeah, you know, let me explain. Many of you might already know what is cloud computing, but see, theoretical definition means nothing if you don't understand concept. So let me give you a use case. Let me give you a scenario, and let me explain in, from that scenario. Okay. So let me put it here. First of all, let's try to let me give a scenario. Let's uh, currently I'm in India right now. Okay, currently I'm in India. Now I'm working from here, but let's say and I'm I'm by the way I'm from big data domain. Okay, I'm from big data domain. I uh, regularly work on data analytics project. Now in this big data domain, let's say I have a I, this is my system and I have lots of clients' data. I have a lots of clients' data. I have a lots of other tools as well, and I need to provide support to my team. Okay, I need to guide my team. I need to lead my team. I need to provide support to them constantly. Correct. And let's say this is my system. This is my laptop, and I have all of my clients' data in an external hard disk drive. Although this is not allowed, everyone knows this, but I want you to assume this scenario. I have some data in, in this external hard disk drive of my clients' data. But now I am moving to let's say London for some project work or for some uh, you know some. Um, Vacation. Let's say some vacation. I'm moving to London. Okay, for my project work. Now, what will happen now is that let's say while I move to this another place from my current place, I'm moving to this other place. During this, you know, travel, few things happen. Let's say I lost the hard disk drive that I was carrying. I lost this drive. Like you know, I might have lost it somewhere. Somebody might have stolen it from me. Okay, or another scenario could be it got corrupted. Okay, let's say it got damaged and it got corrupted. Okay, whatever might have happened, the end result is that I lost that particular storage drive. And when I say I lost that storage drive, it basically means I lost my data. Correct, obviously. Now I'm in London. I have my system. I have my system with me, but I do not have my client's data. And that is the worst thing that can happen. Losing your client's data is the worst thing that happens, especially when you are working on data engineering, data analytics, data science project. So I'm in London and I lost my client's data. i cannot provide support to my team anymore okay so this is one scenario now uh, i will give you a counter scenario and using this counter scenario we will understand we will get into the cloud computing so the counter scenario that i want you to understand is instead of storing data in this external hard disk drive i store my data let's say in in google drive Okay, what is Google Drive? Google Drive, can I say it's a cloud storage solution? Yes, it's a cloud storage solution. Okay, I store my data in a Google Drive, and now when I move to the London, can I say all these three reasons that I put here, stolen, corrupted, lost? Can I say all three of them are not valid anymore? You guys can understand. Nobody can steal Google Drive, my Google Drive storage from me. It cannot get corrupted. I cannot lose it. I cannot forget it back at my home, right? So. If I am here in London, can I say it doesn't matter what time it is or what location? Forget about London. As long as I am in in a place where I have access to internet, can I say I will always be? Uh, I will always have this data. Yes, we we will have this data. Okay. So what I want you to understand, this is cloud computing, not exactly development cloud computing, but this is the use case of cloud computing. This is cloud computing. Now, what makes this cloud computing? Right. What makes this as a cloud computing? the thing that is making it as a cloud computing is that when i am in london how can i access this drive how can i access this data to access this data i simply need to go to drive.google.com and to go to this address all i need is internet okay you must have heard about this see whenever you read a definition on any particular topic on any technical concept try to dissect that definition try to get into each and every word of that definition whenever you might have read about what is cloud computing you always heard about like it is something which is always accessible over internet now you understand why it is accessible over internet because you need to just visit a address right and you must have also read like it is always it, uh, a cloud computing is a service which is accessible from anywhere at any time obviously if it is accessible over internet you can access it from anywhere at any time right so that is your uh, uh, so by the way wh what makes it cloud computing what makes it cloud com uh, cloud computing let me show you this external hard disk drive that we have this is a storage solution okay we are discussing a uh, storage example this is a physical storage solution okay this is a physical storage but this google drive is this a physical no 
This is a virtual storage solution. This is a virtual storage solution. That is the difference. Virtual storage is something that I can access virtually from internet, while physical storage is something that I have to carry. So, in a you know very simplest way, in a very simplest form, this is what cloud computing is. Right? This is what cloud computing is. Now, this is one use case scenario. Now I will jump to another use case. See, I'm in my training. I'm not going to open any PPT. I'm not going to go through uh, you know some definition. I rather give you use case, and we, that is a better way of learning. Okay, I hope uh, you guys are uh, cool with that. There is a question. There is something that uh, requested by Mohammad. If possible, please give us option for mute and unmute. Uh, actually, in here in Intel Pet, we do not give that option. Like I don't have any problem. But the reason why we don't give that option uh, most of the time is that because there are many people in the class. Now this has happened in the past that if we unmute, if we give that unmute and mute access to everyone, multiple people. And when I say multiple people, I, I mean ten plus people at the same time they unmute themselves. And everyone want to ask their question first. Uh, first, nobody's ready to wait. So it's like a you know it's like a market. Ten people are asking same question uh, at the same time, and trust me, that completely ruins your training. Okay, and many times we have also seen that people unmute themselves and they just go outside and their uh, background noises. Uh, it's just there all the time. So that is the reason why uh, uh, what I will suggest is that uh, let's keep it muted. And whenever you have any question, let let me just finish the topic first. And whenever you have question, just put your question in Q and A. And towards the end, I will go through all the question one by one, and your question will get answered. If it in case you feel like Pratik, my question is not getting answered, or I'm not able to answer, or we are not able to understand your question, then let me know. I will unmute you. Great. Okay. So this was your one use case. Right. Now let me give you another use case. Another use case I want you to understand is let's say uh, we want to start our own startup. Okay. Let's say we want to start our own uh, big company. Let's say a Facebook.com. Okay. Imagine Mark Zuckerberg is starting Facebook.com and from his college. Okay. Back in the days, we didn't had cloud computing. So at that time, a person who is in college who want to want to start his own internet business. Okay. A website that is you know accessed by people all over the world. How does that work out? Many people I saw here they have ten plus years of experience. So you guys can relate with me. You guys might understand. Like what was the struggle back then? Let me put it here, and you guys, people who have ten plus years of experience, please let me know in the chat whether you guys agree with this or not. So back in the days, whenever we wanted to start a very big company, okay, at that time, let's say, let's uh, understand this use case. A person is in college. That person have his website ready, code ready, everything is ready. What is that one thing we need to host our website? What is it? Obviously, server. Okay, our website is ready. Our domain name is also finalized. So we need web server to host our our website. No, not internet. We need web server to host our website. Okay, let's say a college kid was able to afford two server. Okay, for his website, and initially we had like hundred users. Initially we had like hundred users. So you guys can understand a uh, hundred user can easily be managed by two server. Even if you are not from IT background, you can understand hundred user can easily handle by two server. That's good. Everything will run fine. But over a period of time, your users will increase. Okay, your users will increase. Okay, your users will increase from hundred to let's say hundred thousand users. Two hundred thousand users. Now you know what will happen. Obviously, all of your server will get crashed. Your server will get crashed. There's nothing you will be able to do, right? So, in this scenario, what a business should do? How they should go about this? Let me show you what they should do. One minute. Generally, during such time, a business go with something called as data center that you might have seen in movies or at many places. Or if any one of you who is from admin side, you might have visited a data center. Okay, so a organization or a person will try to buy a lot of server. Okay, so this is data center. What is a data center? It is a collection of, it is a place where you store hundred thousands of server. So can I say if I have a data center, then I don't need to worry about so many users, right? If I have a data center instead of two server, so many server can easily be handled by my by my data center, right? Okay, that's a good solution. But the problem with this solution is that, and please pay attention here, everyone, uh, especially the people with good experience, because 
Okay, I will tell you why. Uh, later, I will tell you why. See, what is the problem here with this solution? Can I say for buying so many hundreds of thousands of server, can I say the biggest problem we have here is Okay, can I say a huge capital expenditure is a big problem? What is going on? Right? It's a huge cost to the business. Now, any now think about from a startup point of view, because I have worked with some startup as well. Uh, I know people who are who have their own uh, business startup, uh, sorry, uh, IT startup. And I'm telling you from their point of view, what are the problems they face? So huge capital expenditure is one of the biggest problem. Second thing, this itself is a very, very huge cost. But if you look at this data center, what is another cost that comes your comes to your mind? Don't you think you need a real estate to store so many server? You actually need a place to store all of the server. And that itself is a very huge cost. You need to actually have a place where you will be, you, like the, the companies have buildings where they have their data center. Okay, so this is a, this itself is a very big cost. You actually need a place to store all of that data, uh, to store all of the server. After this, you might have guessed, after this, we, the another cost that you can think of, you have so many server, you need to provide them constant electricity. When you have so many server, you need to constantly provide them a cooling system. Other, otherwise, all of the server will get overheated. You might have a fire risk. So, you know, their maintenance cost, the electricity cost, the cooling system cost, cost, so many upgradation cost, so many overhead cost. So can I say after real estate, operation cost is a very huge thing. Operation or you can say maintenance cost is a very huge thing. Right? Now, even if you go through this three, uh, you know, disadvantage, this three points, can I say you are already, you know, one minute, guys, is my voice breaking? Is it for everyone or is it for only Vignesh or Ahmed? Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So see, here, these are the these three reasons are enough. My mic is already uh, close to my mouth. From your side, good. So it's I think good from a headphone or something like that. Okay, okay. So moving forward, forward. These three reasons are enough to demotivate you from starting your own business, right? Now, let me tell you one more thing. The fourth uh, thing is the time is a very big issue. Okay, back in the days, it used to take nearly eight to 12 months to call the vendor, to order the servers, so the, all of the server will get delivered at your place, then setting up the server, then having your admin team install everything on that server and making your server uh, live and ready. It's a huge, uh, you know, uh, time requirement. Okay, so by the time when you, uh, you know, have your server and everything is ready, some but some big some big organization might steal your idea, right? So time is a very big issue. And one more issue that we have here is, and this is probably probably one of the worst problem that you can have. That is scalability. Let me tell you what do I mean by scalability. Now everyone, uh, please pay attention here. If my hundred, if suddenly I got, I was expecting hundred user, but my service became very popular overnight, and I suddenly got hundred thousand user. So my two server, of course, they will crash. So how many of? Okay, obviously everyone knows if they will crash. So now we will have downtime. Okay, we will have downtime. And let me tell you, in a business, in an IT business or any business, you can say, when you have a downtime in your IT service, when you have a downtime in your IT service, that downtime is directly proportional to the loss in revenue. It is loss to the business. Ask any person who is in management. Having a downtime in business, is a, uh, having a downtime in your IT infra is direct loss in revenue. Okay, and I'm pretty much sure many of you people who have 15 plus years of experience, you guys already know this. Okay, but let's just assume that we, all, we also bought, we already bought 10,000 server and our server are always way too good enough for any traffic. Now my another scenario is, what if it never grows. Or what if your all the number of user goes down back to 100 user? Now you have 10,000 server running and you have like only 100 user or 1,000 user. Now don't you think all those 10,000 server will be underutilized? 
Now let me tell you second thing. When you have under underutilized resources in a project, I mean, I say resources. I do not mean people. I mean um, infrastructure. When you have underutilized infrastructure in your project, that leads to, you know, you know, uh, a lot of expense, a lot of unnecessary expense. Your project will not be cost effective at all. Okay. So now you have a different scenario, opposite scenario. You have very less user, but many servers are running, and you are just wasting away your money. So this is the big issue. Okay, with your traditional technologies, with your traditional way where you buy a server, this is a very very big issue, and this is what is scalability. Okay, scalability is not there. So what we want is that if my user increases, my server should also increase. But here we know uh, setting all the server takes a lot of time, so that is not possible, and the next thing is that if my user decreases if the demand decreases i want my resource to be de to decrease as well so that is what scalability is and we do not have that here okay so there are many even more problems okay list of problems is there but these are the five biggest problem that we have and let me tell you cloud computing solve this five problem and this is the reason why if you go out in the market right now and you look for a aws job Job in AWS, or even if you look uh, look into the company where you are working, you will find out that whatever the projects that are there on cloud, whether it's AWS, whether it's Azure, okay, whatever the projects that are there, more majority of those projects are, in fact, all over the world, I can say this with very confidence, eighty percent projects in the world currently are when I, uh, cloud projects, eighty percent cloud projects in the world are migration projects. They are the migration projects. How many of you guys have migration project uh, going on in your organization? Obviously, I'm talking about experienced people, because even in my organization, even though we have big data projects, many of them involves a lot of migration part. Okay, to those people who are new to the IT, who are not working in any any IT company, always remember this. Experience that you might be getting, this insight that you might be getting from other working people, this is very valuable for for the beginning of your career. So please make a note of it. Do not get scared by this. So many people are there working here and there. Do not get scared by this. Use this. Migration project basically means, okay, let I'll tell you that in a moment. See, so the thing is that this is your traditional technology. Okay, this is your traditional technology. Let me tell you how cloud computing solved this problem. Let me tell you that. So the way cloud computing solve this problem is like this: in cloud computing, everything that you get is virtual. Now you understand why I discuss this use case. Cloud computing provides you storage. Cloud computing provides you server, storage, networking, database, and whatnot. They provide you DevOps service. They provide you big data service. They provide you machine learning service. They provide you literally everything. But whatever they provide, at least 98% of the things that you get from a cloud are virtual. Just like your Google Drive, compare your Google Drive with your uh, with your external hard disk drive. You, when you when we are talking about external hard disk drive, it's a physical device that we have with ourselves. But when we are talking about Google Drive, it's a virtual storage. Just like Google Drive, all the things that you get on cloud are virtual in nature. Okay. But the question is, you might be thinking, but Pratik, just because they are virtual in nature, how does that solve this problem? Okay. How does that it solve this problem? Let me tell you. When let's let's take an example. Earlier we take the storage example. Now we will take some different example. Now we will take the example of server. So in AWS cloud, there is something called called as EC2. Now don't worry about what is the full form of EC2. What is EC2? Don't worry about that. Just try to understand. Just uh, know this fact. There is something called as EC2 that gives you server. Just like there is something called as Google Drive that gives you storage. Okay, there is something called as EC2 that gives you server. Okay, but the server that it gives to you, uh, guys, uh, see, I can see a lot of questions. Most of your question, my explanation, and if you feel like questions are coming in, it, it type the question. You won't be paying attention to what I'm saying. Okay, so please let me understand what I'm trying to say. Right, otherwise you your thing cannot do that. Okay. Yeah, I will. Okay, that gives you, gives you server. But we are talking about cloud, so EC2 will provide you server, but that will be a virtual server. Google Drive provide you storage, but that is virtual storage. Okay, 
So instead of buying a server from a vendor, physical server, these are your physical server. Instead of buying this, uh, uh, you know, server from from a vendor, what I will do is that I will go to AWS and I will go to EC2 and I will ask EC2, hey EC2, give me two server. Okay. So EC2 will provide me two server and this will be EC2 virtual server. Okay. This will be EC2 virtual server. Now the question. Why having a virtual server, so like how having a virtual server solve this problem? Let's consider the very first uh, first point. Let's say the first point is huge capital expenditure. When you buy thousand server, when you buy thousand physical server, it comes with a huge cost. But when you go with when you you know go ahead ahead with thousand virtual server, it doesn't comes with huge cost. It it does not. It do, it doesn't come with huge cost. Why? Let me tell you the reason. Let's say I'm moving to London for um, for two months. Okay. Let's say I'm just going for vacation for two months, or I have some work there. Tell me, am I going to buy a property there? Am I going to buy a place there? Am I going to buy a home there? Obviously not. Why? The first reason, I cannot afford it. It's very very at high cost in London. Their rates are above anything. It's one of the most expensive city. That is the first thing. Second thing, it doesn't make sense. Okay, you cannot. It doesn't make sense to buy a property if you are just going to stay there for two months. Can anybody provide me a solution in this scenario? What should I do? Airbnb, correct? Any other solution? Anyone? Correct. Hotel, correct. So a solution that we can establish here is we can rent out a place. Now you can understand how much difference is there in renting out a place and buying the entire place. You can understand the cost difference. Renting out a place is hundred times cheaper than buying a place, right? So that's what we are we are doing here as well. So when you go to AWS Cloud, when you asked EC2 that hey EC2 I want server, I want two server or I want ten thousand server, EC2 will give you virtual server. But this virtual server is not something that you will buy forever. EC2 will give you this virtual server at a rent. You do not own this server. You get this server at a rent. And that is the reason why 10,000 server you bought here, and the 10,000 server you rented out here. Of course, this will be 100 times cheaper. On cloud, you rent out their capabilities, and when I say capabilities, I mean server, I mean storage, database, networking, big data tools, DevOps tool, all of this thing. They are capabilities on cloud. Whether it's AWS, whether it's Azure, you rent out things, you rent out capabilities. So can I say I solved the first problem? Can we say we solved the first problem? Not me, but AWS. We solved this problem using rent. Correct. So, okay, that's the one thing. We solved this problem. Next, now let's consider the second thing. Now we are talking about virtual service, uh, virtual services. We are talking about a virtual server. You guys can understand when we are talking about virtual server, there is no need to buy a place. They are virtual. I can start. My laptop is there. Okay. We are having this virtual training. Try to understand real world example. We are having virtual training. Okay. So many people are here in the class. Do we need a place to the, for this? No. If I see my, uh, I have my own uh, personal training as well. For my personal training. I do not. I did not. Own, uh, you know, bought a place or rent out a place. That happens on Zoom as well. So when you are talking about virtual server, virtual database, you are, when you are talking about virtual data center, there is no need to buy anything. No need to rent out or buy a place. So this problem was solved because of virtualization. Okay, everything is virtual. There is no need to buy anything. Okay, so you don't need to store all of this data center. I hope all of you are understanding. I hope everyone is liking the way training is going and you are understanding this part. Now let's consider the third thing, third point, and let's see how we solve this third point. See, um, let me try to give you yes, okay. See, uh, when you are using a cloud service, you are getting a server virtually. I'm getting this server virtually, but you can understand it's not a magic. You are not getting anything right out of thin air. It's not magic. There has to be some physical server somewhere in the world, and there are somewhere in the world. There are actually physical server that are you know host that uh, that are owned by 
Amazon or AWS, and you are getting your virtual server from those real server. You are getting this virtual server from data center that are some. Let me put it here. So I'm getting this virtual server. I'm in India right now. Okay. I'm in India. In US. In US, Amazon have their own data center. Amazon have their physical data center. Okay, and using cloud computing technology, or you can say data center technology. Uh, uh, sorry, virtualization technology. AWS is providing me this virtual server from real physical server. AWS is providing me this virtual server from hundreds of physical server in this location. Okay, so I'm getting them virtually. Now, as of now, this part comes under me, and this part comes under AWS. Tell me whose responsibility it is, or on whose, on whom, sorry, on whom it falls to provide electricity, to provide, uh, you know, to do upgradation, to provide cooling system. Obviously, the organization that have the physical data center, they are the one who will be responsible for providing everything. So can I say operation cost, maintenance cost, upgradation cost, electricity cost, everything, all of this operation cost and maintenance cost, can I say it is handled by cloud provider? And since it is handled by cloud provider, one more thing solved, you know, one more problem solved. Okay, so all of these things is AWS responsibility. They are the one who will look after it. I don't care about that. Okay, I will only use this, and I will pay some uh, rently cost. I will pay some rent there. So this is how we solve this three problem. Let me tell you the fourth problem. I told you back in the days to set up all of this server from physical server, physical data center, used to take months. But let me tell you here, within few minutes, you get everything. Okay, so today or tomorrow, when I will create some server, when I will create a virtual machine, a EC2 server. Practically, when I will show it to you, you will see within a minute or with, uh, within one minute, you will have your server up and ready. Okay, all of this thing will be ready for you. You don't need to wait or waste any time. So compare compare that few seconds with ten months. Obviously, this is much more better. And finally, the scalability part. So, cloud computing have this concept of rapid elasticity. Okay, when we are talking about a cloud, whether it's AWS or Azure or GCP. It have a very essential characteristic. That characteristic is called as rapid elasticity. Rapid elasticity. Let me tell you what it means. Rapid elasticity basically means initially I had only hundred users. Initially, I had only 100 users. Okay, no problem. Two server are good enough to handle 100 server. But if suddenly my number of user increases, AWS will automatically add more and more server. AWS will scale up number of resources. AWS will add more and more and more server immediately. If your user goes down, you don't need to worry. AWS will remove all the underutilized extra server. And it will keep the server only that number of server which is which are required. Okay, and you will pay accordingly. If number of server increases, of course you will pay a little bit extra money. If number of server decreases, you will not pay that much money. Okay, you will pay only for the amount of time that you are using a service. If you are not, if you are not using a service, then you will you will not pay even a single penny. This is called as pay per usage. Right, it's called as paper usage, and here this is called as rapid elasticity. So you are getting scalability here. User increases, server increases. User decreases, server decreases. So now when user increases suddenly, my resources are increasing suddenly. Let me write it here for you guys. Let's say load on your website increases. Okay, now because of rapid elasticity, your resources like server will also will also increase in number. What is the result of this? When your resources increases in number, now you will not have downtime. You will not have a downtime. When you do not have downtime, 
it's you know good for business it is good for business right and when load decreases when load decreases resource decreases right and what is the benefit of this you will not have any under under utilized resource running so it will save your cost okay it will save your cost and this is also good for business okay and again i'm telling you these are just a five problem there are many many more problem okay and cloud computing solve this problem so i hope instead of going through a ppt instead of going through a textbook definition i hope this use cases help you understand what exactly is cloud computing and in a detailed way everybody clear with this if you are clear then just type clear in the chat or if you have any question please put your question in q and a okay cool so i hope those people who were earlier saying that they did not understood in some previous uh, introductory session i hope you understood what is introduction to cloud computing now see let me tell you one more thing here you can understand earlier i said in the market 80% projects are migration project or in 80% there will be some part of migration why why is that the reason why 80% projects are migration project is because the entire it industry or every industry that have their product uh, online or on some application they are moving to the cloud what is migration migration basically means earlier my company my application my software they were hosted on the local data center that my company bought but we realized that this local data center is very expensive and if you move to the cloud you get so many benefits you save so much money when you move to the cloud you save so much money since my business decided uh, we realized that we can save so much money and so to save that much money we will move to the cloud so earlier whatever that was running in our local data center in the data center that my company already bought now we are moving all of those thing to the aws cloud this is called as migration you are doing migration from local to the cloud why because you you can save so much money business can save so much money i hope now you understood why so many migration project is, projects are there okay so now moving forward so that was your uh, this thing uh, intro to cloud computing now uh, let me tell you just give me one minute let me see what was the next topic i just use ppt to see what was the next topic let's say let me explain you one more thing here you guys whenever you you know tried studying about cloud you might you must have come came across this topic correct you must have came across this topic many times now let me explain you this topic in detail okay so public cloud versus private cloud versus hybrid cloud let's try to understand what each one of them means see what is public cloud public cloud from the definition from the name itself you can understand it is a cloud which is available publicly okay it is a cloud where any person or any organization can sign up and they can create their account like aws is there i can sign up on aws i can and i can use aws services i can sign up on azure so aws azure gcp these are all the public cloud okay all of them are the public cloud now they are the public cloud but what about private cloud let's try to understand what that is so private cloud is something like see in public cloud what happens any organization in the world can create their own aws account and once they create their own aws account they can use aws but you can understand let's say i have a i have my own organization i have my own company and my competitors in my business they also have their own company and both of us are relied on aws now don't you think you and your competitor both are on the same uh, same cloud and don't you think that might leads to some security issue earlier somebody was asking uh, what are the challenges with cloud okay don't you think there could be it could lead to some security issue since everyone is using the same uh, you know same cloud right because i'm not sure how many of you know this um, 
I read this once in some uh, in in one of the blog. If I found that blog link, I will share it with you. Many e-commerce business in US, they do not use AWS cloud. Okay, they do not use AWS cloud. Why? Because AWS cloud belongs to Amazon, which is the leader in e-commerce all over the world. And tell me if I know if I have my own e-commerce business and I'm doing well, and if I use my entire if I run my entire business on AWS cloud. Don't you think there is a chance that Amazon might look into my data? I know that is unethical, but don't you think there is a chance of security issues? Obviously, and this is the reason why uh, there is a. I think there is a report. I do not ha have that link, but you can find it on internet. Many e-commerce client do not use AWS Cloud, at least in US. Right. So, such organization, what does what they do? Or if you talk about, let's say, banking client. any of the banking client generally banking client or finance uh, finance client they do not move to aws uh, they do not move to the cloud why because their data is very very confidential they are of course their data is finance data they do not want to upload their data on a public cloud they do not want to take any risk so what such organization does is that they have their own data center uh, they have sorry they have their own uh, you know cloud they have their own private cloud so this is how it looks like i'm just giving you a pictorial way so this is your uh, you know company any of the company and here you have aws cloud so multiple companies try to understand this in pictorial way okay so pay attention everyone all of this company are utilizing aws cloud they are using aws cloud for their business correct now imagine the same scenario in private cloud so this is your public cloud okay in case of private cloud let me show you what will happen in case of private cloud you are going to have every organization will have their own private cloud or in fact it it should look something like this one minute okay every organization will have their own private cloud in which they will operate okay so this private cloud is available only to the employees of that organization every company will have their own private cloud if some person outside of this organization if they try to access this cloud will it be available to them no it is available only within the premise of this organization it is available only within the within some network range it is available only to the employees of this organization is it available to entire world no can anyone like you and me can we create our account in their in their cloud no why because because it is private cloud private cloud is dedicated to a business or to a company okay private cloud is dedicated to a particular company and that is the reason why it is very highly secure okay public cloud is also very very secure uh, but obviously compared to your private clouds it is always less secure compared to private cloud okay so dedicated to business high high secure highly secure but a problem is there now let's say this is my company and i want entire security i i, I cannot tolerate any security issues so what i will do i will set up the security for my uh, i sorry i will set up a cloud for my company now when i'm doing that everything is your responsibility okay everything is your responsibility you have to create that on your own you have to manage that cloud you have to make sure that it is secure see just because you are creating a private cloud it doesn't mean it is by default secure you have to set up everything you have to provide encryption you have to provide network security you have to provide firewall and so many other things so everything is your responsibility here is anything my responsibility no i can directly use the service i don't care about anything rest of the thing is managed by aws but here everything is your responsibility and yes here also you have some responsibility but we will discuss that later one more uh thing here okay let me ask you guys this can you guys suggest can you guys think of any other point here where private cloud oh sorry where public cloud is better than private cloud any point that you might have noticed look at this diagram yes correct cost is there correct good that's the point 
public cloud is of course cost effective this is expensive correct very good manoj and shivaji scalability is something that you will face uh, issue face you will you will face issues in private cloud but in public cloud why security i ask you what is that one thing where you think uh, you know public cloud is better private cloud is better than security but in public cloud scalability is there so or, or i should say it is very very it is highly scalable okay it is highly scalable while private cloud is not that scalable why because here aws have their own data center okay and their data center are spreaded all over the world while here i have my cloud only within one company if something goes wrong with this cloud everything goes wrong or i have limited data center lim limited server okay while but if but aws have hundreds of data center spreaded all over the world so their scalability is not a issue at all okay there is no uh, scalability issue there right so these are some of the areas i i hope you understood what are the places where public cloud is better what are the places your where your uh, you know uh, private cloud is better i hope you understanding what are the challenges with your public cloud right so now let me tell you few more things so there is a hybrid cloud as well okay so there is a hybrid cloud as well right so the thing with the hybrid cloud is that see hybrid cloud basically means a combination of public cloud as well as private cloud obviously from the name itself you can understand it's a combination of public and your private cloud but uh, you know you will get uh, it's not a big deal but how does we use this in real world again let me explain you pictorially and this time i will give you a use case and that this use case is from one of my project so uh, i think it was 2018 yes in 2018 19 we were working with a client it, it's a huge client okay we were working with that client and in that project our our client is a very huge company one of the fortune uh, 500 or 100 something so they had many aws account they had many more than i guess 50 aws account they have now we were supposed to work in their let's say let me give let me give you some example here so we were supposed to work in their account a okay <coughs> this was their aws account a all one okay this was their one, account one and they had their account two as well okay they had their account two as well right so see we were supposed to do all of our development like uh, we were creating a data pipeline uh, for our client that uh, used to do batch processing and streaming processing okay you can ignore that but our development was happening here okay and we had our pipeline here so our pipeline that we created was here now this pipeline was processing our client's data so there has to be some data source right so our client had many data source since i told you it's one of the very big company they had many data source they had data source from their customer mobile application from their android application their ios application okay so we were getting data constantly from customer application we were constantly getting data from their on premise server they had their on prem server on prem server means their server from their local data centers we were getting uh, you know there were many many uh, even some additional applications were there so there were many sources of the data and we were taking input from all of them okay there was some there was a database as well we were taking data uh, in data input from all of them but there was one more resource sorry there was one more source from where we were supposed to take data but the problem is that that resource was not within this cloud that resource was not outside of the cloud that resource it was a database postgres sql database that database was in another account okay so it was a database and we were supposed to take data from here as well now here you can understand we have a problem we are working in account 1 and we we are taking data from account 2 now how to work around with that so this part 
is handled by your another AWS service. And we will discuss that. But what if here you nobody uh, noticed that here I'm talking about cloud to cloud and assuming both of them are actually both of them, they were AWS cloud only. So you can set up a good connection between them. No problem. And I will show you how to do this as well. But what about this on-prem server? Or what about, let's say, they are private cloud. Here, our client had only on-prem server, but imagine our client had their own private cloud as well. Let's say, this is their private cloud servers. Now you can understand here, you need to connect a private cloud, okay, with the AWS account. You need to connect a private cloud with the AWS account, which is itself a public cloud. Now, don't you think this is a scenario for hybrid connection, hybrid cloud? Okay, because we had to set up entire connection with their private cloud. Okay, this is one of the use cases of hybrid cloud. In in actually, this was not. I would I would not say this is a complete hybrid use case, but in generally in hybrid use case, what happened generally your uh, banking uh, domain client they go with hybrid client client. So let me give you a scenario. This is not something that I have worked on, but I know this scenario. See, let me give you another scenario. Let's say this is a, there is a banking client and this banking client wants us to work with them and they want us to create a data pipeline so that they can have some, uh, for their project, they want us to create a data pipeline. Now this banking client is very secure. Of course it will, it's a banking client. So they have their own private cloud. But they understood the benefit of AWS cloud. So now they want to move to AWS, which is a public cloud, right? The thing is that they are ready to do all the data processing on AWS cloud. They are ready to do that, do all the data processing on AWS cloud, but they are not ready to move their database on AWS cloud. Their database will be there on their private cloud only. They are not ready to move this to the AWS cloud. So all of our development is happening here in this public cloud, but our source is there in private cloud. Now here we need to set up a connection or some way to transfer data from their public cloud, sorry, from their private cloud to the public cloud. And this gives rise to your hybrid cloud because the final product that you will get, the final product you will get will rely some part of your final product or let's say 90% uh, of your final product will rely on public cloud and 10% of your final product will re rely on private cloud, public and private cloud. This is your hybrid cloud. Everybody understood this now? Are you understanding how a real world hybrid uh, cloud project looks like? Great. Okay. So this is what we have. Now, generally people cover only these three things, but for your additional knowledge, I will, I would like to cover some one, one more extra thing. There is a hybrid environment as well. There is a hybrid environment as well. Okay. Now what is hybrid environment? I'm not clear on private cloud. Is it similar to on-prem data center? No, I'm just coming to that. This is the reason why I'm covering hybrid environment. What is the difference between hybrid cloud and hybrid environment? Let's try to understand this. And if you have, uh, you know, if you are at architect level, please pay attention here. This is important. Hybrid cloud is public cloud plus private cloud. Hybrid environment is public cloud plus on-prem data center. Hybrid environment is, is something that you get when you combine a uh, on-prem data center with a public cloud. Then you get hybrid environment. Let me tell you. Let me explain you this again from a pictorial example. So you have this, uh, so let's say there is this company that uh, you, you have a client, okay? And they have their local data center. They have their local data center, okay? Now you're doing their AWS project and for their AWS project in their local data center, let's say they have a database, okay? Similar scenario, but here we have data center and you're connecting their local data center with a AWS cloud, which is a public cloud. Okay, you're in AWS cloud, you do uh, you uh, made your project and this project is taking input of the data from their local data center. Let's assume in their local data center, they have a, a database. So what is this? This is on-prem, this is public cloud. You get what? You get 
hybrid environment okay but how does this different from your private cloud uh, sorry from your private cloud or hybrid cloud see when you take this data center and you use virtual virtualization technology which exactly done by your aws when you do this when your organization will do this when they take their local data center and they use virtualization technology to provide virtual capabilities within their organization only then you get what then you get private cloud see there is a difference this is your local data center this is your on premise okay this is your on prem there there is a difference between what is on prem and what is private cloud if you just have a data center then that is your on prem data center but when you use virtualization technology on top of that data center then you get private cloud and when you attach this private cloud actually you will get that here when you attach this private cloud with a public cloud you get what tell me guys what do you get you get here hybrid cloud so there is a difference between what is on prem and what is private cloud on prem is just hardware that is there okay when you use virtualization technology to create virtual server out of it then that is your uh, that is your then that becomes a cloud and since this cloud is provided only for that organization is it a public cloud or private cloud it is a public uh, sorry private cloud i hope you are understanding this what is virtual elaborate virtualization mode see virtualization is basically a technology that you use to like for example how many of you guys or who has this question mayankor how, how many of you guys have ever installed a virtual operating system in your laptop using uh, you know using tools like oracle uh, virtual box or vmware many people did that now for those people who did not do it i want i want to give you a task see if you guys are coming from non it you have to do little bit extra hard work so i will help you there let me give, give me one minute i'll share a link what i want you guys to do that do is today after the training or tomorrow go through the video that i'm for the link i'm sharing one minute i'm sharing a video in the video link in the chat okay let me do one thing i will not share it right now otherwise everyone will jump into that video remind me before the end of the session or let me paste it here remind me before the end of the session i will share this link in the chat okay now you don't need to do this installation okay whatever that is shown in this video you don't need to do that just watch that video for i'm talking to non it people coming from non it background just watch that video and you will understand how virtualization looks like and for other people who who ever installed at least once installed a virtual operating system what happened in that installation what happened when you virtually install operating system okay you know let me go let me elaborate more on this so in this video what you will see is that a person have a let's say windows laptop okay so this is a windows laptop this is a laptop in this laptop we have installed windows operating system okay so windows operating system is in, installed there okay now what happened is that in previous session by iit professor he told if data center fulfills three to five characters of cloud then we can call it cloud what are those see mayank uh, that that thing was taught by that professor i'm not going to uh, cover that because that that is more of a theoretical concept okay let me cover in uh, what i want to cover because i want to keep it practical and from real world ori uh, from the real world ori orientation and see i don't have any problem actually the three or five there are five characteristic and those five characteristic are defined by a institute called as nist okay there is a institute international institute uh, uh, it was something like national institute of standard and technology yes standard and technology it is defined by that institution they have defined five characteristic and if a cloud provider satisfies those five characteristic then only those cloud provider is ca categorized as a real cloud computing okay let me tell you in this two use cases that i have covered in this one and this two use cases you already understood those five characteristic trust me on that 
I have my own AWS bootcamp where I teach people for around 60 plus hours. But here and there I've included this thing because there I have time liberty. Here, uh, please try to understand this everyone. Here, here when I'm teaching in IntelliPath, I have limited hours. I have 36 hours in which I have to cover a course content. So I cannot cover everything, but I will try my best. Like in every batch, I, I always cover some extra demo, extra concept. So I'm not gonna, uh, going to cover theoretical concept, most of the theoretical concept, but you know, I'll try my best to cover as many things as I can. Right? So now uh, let me tell you what, where I was. Uh, yeah, so when you have this laptop, when you have this laptop, this laptop have a Windows Server installed. Okay? Now in this Windows laptop, let's say, Windows is there, but now I want a Ubuntu operating system. Now, how can I have that? Am I going to remove my Windows and install Ubuntu? That is one way to do that. Or another way to do that is I will install an application. There, is, there are tools in the market, like uh, there is a tool called as Oracle VirtualBox. When you go through that video, you will understand it. Understand it. Okay, there is a demo in that. I will use that application, and using that application, I will be able to install a Ubuntu operating system or a Linux operating system or any other operating system within my Windows operating system. So I will be able to install a operating system within an operating system. And this operating system that you install within a, within another operating system is called as virtual operating system or guest operating system. Windows, which is the original operating system, it is called as, what do you think it is called as? It is called as host operating system. But you guys tell me, the question is, there is only one laptop, right? There is only one RAM memory. There is only one CPU core. There is only one hardware. Then how does that one hardware is being shared between two operating system? Because every operating system needs its own dedicated hardware. But we have only one hardware. Then how do you think it is being shared? So it is being shared because of virtualization technology. Okay, so here we have a term called as here we have a term called as hypervisor. Hypervisor is a you can say it's a concept, it's a layer that makes you like let me put let go a little bit detail in here. So this is my original hardware. Okay? This is my original hardware, right? On top of this hardware, I have my two operating system. Let's say OS 1 and OS 2. I have OS 2. But how the single hardware is able to uh, give to other uh, both OS? Because they need their own dedicated operating, uh, their, their dedicated hardware. So the way it is working is that there is a hypervisor layer here. This hypervisor layer is nothing but a virtualization technology. This hypervisor layer will make your virtual hardware. So it goes like this. Now you have two set of virtual hardware. Just like we got virtual server. Here now we got virtual hardware. OK? And this is the reason why now every operating system will get its own dedicated hardware. How is it getting possible? Because of hypervisor layer. This is your entire virtualization technology. Of course, this is just a basic overview uh, because that's not our uh, point. That's not our topic. But yeah, there, there it goes in much more detail as well. But that's not our agenda. This is your virtualization technology. Right? So your cloud provider does that. Your cloud provider uses virtualization technology. And when you are using, you have this data center and you are using virtualization technology, then you get private cloud. Then you get public cloud. Your entire cloud computing, the fundamental of your cloud computing is made on top of your virtualization technology. Guys, just one minute. I muted myself. Okay. So, uh, yeah, 
so that that is what your virtualization is and please everyone uh, especially experienced people virtual cloud uh, sorry hybrid cloud and hybrid environment i have seen multi, many people with good experience uh, in cloud they are not clear with this thing because they are not they, it's not something that you discuss every day every day so many people are not clear on this so please so this is these are the different types of cloud you have now let me discuss one more thing service model okay have you guys heard about infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service right now uh, you might have heard of read its theory you might have somebody else might have covered it let me cover it with a ssc example okay my ssc example that i want to cover here is uh, let me tell you let's say uh, you want to you know go for some dinner okay you have a date you have a you know family dinner whatever you want to go for a dining you want to have a good dinner now you guys tell me if i i want to have a good dinner if i cook everything if this dinner is made at my home okay can i compare it with on premise let me give you warning this is my ssc example if if it is made at my home can i say it is on premise if it is made at my home can i say ingredient which which was required to create uh, so which was uh, required to uh, you know make the dinner the utensils in which i cooked the dinner the kitchen the everything that was required can i say everything belong to me because it was done at my home similarly when a company buy their own local data center when they have their own on prem data center everything belongs to them server database every everything belongs to them okay nothing belongs to cloud everything belongs to local right but what is infrastructure as a service infrastructure as a service basically means you are relied for the infrastructure on some on the cloud provider let me explain from the dining example let's say um i am visiting abhishek kumar and uh, he allowed me to you know i can he allowed me that pratik you can cook whatever you want at my place okay i can cook whatever i want at his place is this that he offered a condi he uh, put a condition like pratik you have to bring your own ingredients otherwise kitchen belongs to abhishek utensils belongs to abhishek i just need to bring my own ing ingredients and i i need to do the cooking so can i say for the entire kitchen utensils and everything which can i compare this infrastructure with computer hardware like ram server cpu can i say if i am relying if i am relying on this hardware for some other person then that is a infrastructure as a service that is a infrastructure as a service because when you go to the cloud when you create server on this cloud what is the server made up of this server is made up of cpu this server is made up of ram this server is made up of some networking uh, capability it comes with some networking capabilities it comes with some storage what are these thing aren't this hardware they are nothing but hardware and if i am getting virtual hardware so can i say i am getting virtual infrastructure so when you are getting this hardware this infrastructure from cloud when cloud is taking responsibility of hardware then then we can say it is infrastructure as a service you are getting infrastructure the hardware from the cloud itself that is your infra infrastructure as a service okay then we have platform platform as a service what is platform as a service let me tell you so we are going to get this server but what server which server can i say i can get if i want i can get a linux server can i say if i want i can get a windows server i can get red hat server i can get ubuntu server right so let's say we are getting a windows server so do you guys agree with me when i uh, that when we are talking about windows server hardware is already uh, there but this time along with hardware we also have a software that is operating system okay we already have a operating system right where by default you will get a infrastructure of course how can you have a platform without infrastructure but along with this infrastructure you will get a platform with like a linux operating system windows operating system or let's say i'm i'm creating a virtual database on aws cloud 
right? Then I will get a MySQL database. If I'm just getting a database server, then that's a pure hardware. But if I'm getting MySQL database, then that's a hardware plus software, a platform of MySQL. From a dining example, you can say, Abhishek is also providing me. Pradeep, you just need to come here. You are my maid. I'm, I, he hired me as a maid. And I just need to go to his place. And, it, and it just, I need to cook. OK, he's taking care of ingredient. He's taking care of utensil. And he hired me as a maid. My salary is not enough. My IT salary. OK, so that is your platform as a service. And yeah, we, we people in IT, we have to link, right? So software as a service basically means me and Abhishek, we are either going going to you know some hotel, and there we are going to have dinner, or we are going to use this application. Uh, what is the name of them? That uh, we are going to use this uh, application to order food. And when we order food or when we visit a restaurant, kitchen belongs to them, ingredients belong to them. They are the one who are doing the cooking. So that is software as a service. In context of cloud, when we are talking about Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is something that you have to download, you have to install, then you can use it. But when we are using Google Docs, do we need to download, install them? No. Google Docs you can use directly. What is Google Docs? It's a software as a service. Google is providing you the entire software as a service. You just need to go, go to docs.google.com. So that is an example of software as a service. I hope you are understanding all of this thing. It might have been covered by a previous trainer, but I hope you are understanding my essay. You are liking this. It's 9.30, nine, one and a half an hour. You guys are waiting for, for the break. We'll go for a break now. After my work, I came out, came out with. OK, so these are, these are the examples that I've created throughout my career.